Yo guys, what's going on? It's Lewis here with Crypto Elite, and I'm coming at you with another market update because obviously over the past few days, we have seen some incredibly crazy stuff happen with cryptocurrencies. They have gone up. Ethereum is up 22%. Bitcoin is up 8%, 7.7%. That's, that's not too much, but we have seen a couple coins such as where is it dogecoin look at this absolutely insanity 150 percent for dogecoin and we'll be getting into that in this in this update uh i do want to say i have not had an update or i haven't made an update in a while because some pretty tragic news happened i wouldn't well i don't i don't know if i would say tragic but i would say pretty terrible there was a hack a widespread hack that i was a victim of and so I lost a major portion of my trading account. So I have been dealing with that for over a week now or for about a week now. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting my um, I'm not going to be getting my money back. So anyway, I'm doing this market update because obviously right now is the time to be paying attention. You basically could have effed off for the past I don't know, two, three months, maybe even longer and not really cared and not really done anything. But right now we're finally getting some volatility, finally getting some action. And uh, so it's important to do a little bit of, a, of an analysis to have a game plan to not get too caught up in in FOMO and to really just like understand if the market does this then you will do this and what do you think will happen do you think that the bottom was in back in June do you think that we're going to turn over and eventually actually hit the 2020 slash 2021 yearly um, open and close, uh, aka the 2018 top. Do you think that we're going to go down to the 88% retracement, which is typical for bear markets to bottom around the 88%? What, what do you think we're, is going to happen? And uh, how are you going to trade it? Or do you think we're going to go up and then turn around? Because that's really what I'm sort of thinking is that we're going to go up and then we're going to turn around and we will eventually see lower lows. I don't think that this was the bottom. So spoiler alert, that is my thought process is that I don't think that this is the bottom. I think that we are still in a bear market. I do think that 2023 will remain to be bearish. I'm, I'm still going to be bearish in 2023. And I do expect us to run these lows eventually. However, um, as a trader, I want to trade level to level. I want to trade what I think is right. And I want to put on trades to potentially make money, whether the market goes up or goes down. So that's why I'm doing this market update. So I think the first thing that I want to start off with is, um, well, I'll start off with Elon Musk and Twitter because this is a pretty this is pretty big news. Elon Musk did officially take over Twitter. You could see this now that, um, of course, the Washington Post are just talking all this BS and there's just a whole bunch of crap happening um, regarding like super super leftist um, organizations that are saying like, oh, now the racists are back, now the bigots are back, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What does that mean about crypto though? Well, of course, because Elon Musk loves Dogecoin. Dogecoin, as I showed you before, did have this insane rally up. And honestly, um, I, I'm, I'm happy that the, I, I basically, I knew that this was going to happen. It's pretty much uh, calling for it back in early, early October. But when I got hacked, I went back into USDT. So I unfortunately didn't make this move, despite the fact that I did dollar cost average in over into Do I've been dollar cost averaging into Dogecoin for months. And then and then right here, um, October 21st is when I is when I got hacked. So uh, that really, really sucks. It put me in a bad mood and I didn't want to trade. I didn't want to do anything emotional. So I took a few days off. And of course, <laughs> during the days off, this is what happens. And we start having this bull run. So now that I have leveled off and I'm back you know, I've, I've, I've worked out, um, I've taken a little bit of a break, I've journaled and done some things. I'm, I'm back to doing this analysis, this non-emotional 
um, analysis that is based off of just fact, logic, reasoning, um, and probabilities, because that's, that's really the way to go. And so the first thing that I want to say was the Doge and Elon and all of that other stuff, uh, because that's pretty big news. And honestly, I will say for Dogecoin, I think that, I think that buying Dogecoin and, and averaging into Dogecoin over and over, just continually averaging into Dogecoin uh, and not stopping uh, it, just forever, basically, is a good idea because there's always going to be these huge rallies. It's been happening for years now, literally years and years and years and years. Dogecoin will, will pop up and then pop back and, and crash all the way back down and then pop up even more, crash all the way back down, pop up even more, crash all the way back down. And honestly, I, could, I, I think that Dogecoin is going to reach all new, like, I think it's going to go to over a dollar eventually. Um, when? I have absolutely no idea. But probably when Elon Musk makes uh, crypto, um, integrates crypto with Twitter and Dogecoin is going to be a big part of that. And, and also Dogecoin is going to be used to buy like Tesla merchandise and everything like it was uh, before. So it's only a matter of time before Dogecoin pumps up. And I am I'm just like, I'm sort of considering like, just throwing half my portfolio in there. Obviously at 48 cents, uh, excuse me, uh, 0.048, I was planning on putting 20% of my account into Doge. And this wick wicked down, as you can see, the low is right there. It wicked down to 0.049. And my alert was set at 0.0483. So of course, you know, missed that boat by literally uh, about 2%. Um, and that is unfortunate because obviously that was my long-term investment. And that's the second thing that I want to talk about is something that I continually, continually reiterate over and over and over again, which is that you should have a trading account and you should also have an investment account. So let me put that here, investment account. All right. So you have a trading account and you have an investment account. And here's the thing, as the prices move, let's say the prices move down, as the prices move down, you want more to go into your investment account. Okay, so as the prices move down, you want more money to go into your investment account. So let's say that you start out at 50-50. Okay, you start out at 50-50. As the prices go down, you like, and this is not financial advice. Of course, this is simply what I do as price. And, and I'm just like explaining this as prices go down, more goes into your investment accounts for longer term holds. Okay. Once it reaches, and I'll put this, once prices drop under 78%, it should be at least 70 30 split investments to trading. So let's say that you have $100,000 and the price is 88 or 80% 80 down from the top. I would take $70,000 of that and put it into a longer term investment account. 70% of that $100,000 goes into the longer term investment account if we're down, you know, down here. And I'm not even gonna use Doge because Doge is like, you know, something that's, Doge is a meme coin. So let me go down here, uh, let me go to Bitcoin. Okay, we're at Bitcoin. Here's the top of Bitcoin right up here. And here's the bottom of Bitcoin down here. It's 74%, okay? So it, it hasn't reached underneath 78% yet. So I wouldn't be 70, I wouldn't be 70, 30, but I would probably be around 60, let's say 60, 40. So going back to here, I'll say under 70, under, uh, or I guess I'll say over a 70% drop, 60, 40 split investment trading. Okay. Then, and, and with this, what you do is you have 70,000, let's say you have $60,000 in your investment account and you, and you have $40,000 in your trading account because, um, everything is, you know, let's say it's 70% from the highs and you think that it might go down 80, 88% from the highs. 
you are dollar cost averaging in into your investments and you're just dollar cost averaging you're not going all in but you're just dollar cost averaging into your investment account your trading account remains in usdt and then you trade or usd and you trade based off of technical analysis on your trading account and that's how i play it that's how i play it so because bitcoin and ethereum are so you know they dropped so far down Ethereum dropped 81%, excuse me, 82% from the highs. That means that I have about 70% of my account in a longer term investment account that I simply just dollar cost average in and I would start dollar cost averaging in, let's see, there's the 80%. So here is the 70, 78% is right around here. So right here, is when I would start to average in and I just simply average in this entire area all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. And I just continue to dollar cost average in and I will I will sell if if it reaches a big, you know, a big, big point, like a big, big resistance, you know, for Ethereum 2200, something like that, or a big SR level, which at this point now it's, it's at 2000. Um, and so, and then I'll just continue to dollar cost average in with my investment account. So, by long-term hold, my strategy isn't strictly long-term holding, It's but it is dollar cost averaging, investing, holding un just until it comes up. And, and it might not come up for years, but eventually my thesis is that it will eventually come up. And if it doesn't come up, here's the other, the other um, what do you take, take to this, is that if it never actually does come up here, but it does go like this and it stays down for let's say a year and a half, then I'm not going to sell once it comes up. I will think that enough time has passed that I want to hold it until new all-time highs and or at least until you know it gets to the all-time high or the 61.8 um, level, you know, some super, super high resistance level. I'm not going to sell at the first resistance if enough time has already passed. But if it's half a year, if it's one year, if it's a year and a half, something like that, then I will sell on these. But if it's two years, if it's been two years to two and a half years or longer since, and the price has never actually came up to retest any any resistance levels, then I think that by the time it does come back, excuse me, by the time it does come back up to retest the level, I think it'll just maybe have a small fall, but then, but then surge right through it because enough time has passed. So you have to keep time in account as a factor in your investment, in your longer term investment account, if you're, if you're doing the same strategy that I'm doing. And so that's my strategy. And now because my trading account was hacked and I don't have any money in my trading account anymore, um, I, I've literally over the past week have been trying to figure out how I personally am, am reorganizing my um, my coins and my investments and my trading and, and, and what exchanges I'm going to use and everything like that. Because obviously it, it, it's a, I took a huge hit and it's been extremely draining and um, it has, it obviously hasn't been good. So p me personally, I, I've been, you know, trying to, trying to reorganize everything. But in terms of, uh, in terms of percentages, I gave you, I gave you the percentages that I like to look at, which is, which I explained you know, which I explained right, right here, you know, so we have that. And that's, that's the, that's the key lesson, um, that, that I want to give right now, uh, in terms of, you know, in, in, in terms of strategy, I think, I think this is a great strategy. I honestly, I think this is a really good strategy. And especially if your investments are into good turn, good coins and, and you could take some of this and then you could even go down into the micro caps and you could say uh, 10% of your investment account or, or maybe even 30, 40, 50% of your investment account is going into micro caps under $10 million or uh, under $50 million market cap coins because they have a much bigger potential. And then you could take out your initial once they do a two, three, four, five X and just hold, hold it and wait and see what happens because those might go to zero, but you're going to have a lot more upside uh, if you do that. So, there's different strategies that you could use. I don't recommend having every single 
one of your dollars or every all of your all of your money in one single trading account i think that that's stupid i think you you should have multiple accounts across multiple exchanges i'm very happy that i, I have multiple accounts on multiple exchanges because um only one of my only my main my main trading account was hacked but like my other accounts are fine and so that you know that's why i have multiple accounts and i also have accounts on different platforms like uh, there's there's a lot of platforms now uh robin hood there's m1 there's um cash app even you could buy ca bitcoin on cash app and in all of these different places all of these different brokerages you could set up your different buys so you could set up your investment account your on on for instance KuCoin and you could set up your trading account on Binance US or on uh, Coinbase Pro or on Kraken and you could set up a HODL account and buy it and just put that in your ledger or you could set up a HODL account on on M1 Finance or something like that you know there's multiple different ways how you could go about doing this but I definitely definitely recommend not having all of your money on one exchange I think that is incredibly important all right so now that we're done with that let's go into the actual market update okay guys so we're looking at the total market cap right here and you could see that we did finally break out of this range that we were stuck in since literally september 19th so this was all of september um september to october and then about two more weeks after that or actually mean one more week after that and now we finally had the breakout so it does look like we are having bullish moment i mean we, we're definitely obviously having bullish momentum right now on the total market cap there's more money flooding into the system right now the question is where is that money coming from it's definitely not coming from retail it's definitely coming from within the system so that is important to know it's coming from within the system or possibly hedge funds because i have seen a lot of hedge funds um going long i have seen a lot of hedge funds new hedge funds popping up so that is important to know but for the total market cap we broke out of this range this clear range we came back we retested it and now we're moving up the next place to look at for the total market cap is right here so about 1.02 trillion dollars and you could even say like one trillion dollars we we did get a rejection off of this basically $1 trillion mark, which also does line up with this level right here, which is a bearish order block. So let me just put that right there. And so this whole area is obviously a resistance area. And not only because it's a bearish order block, but you could also see re rejection, rejection. Uh, it used to be support, but we, and it was also rejection back here. So lots of rejection, support, rejection, rejection, and now potential rejection as well. So I would assume that we'll get something like this and then eventually like fall back over and, and come back down. That's, that's what I'm going to assume however obviously we could we could come all the way back up here it's you know anything is possible with cryptocurrency and that's why for you know i, I explained in the beginning i have my investment account where i just dollar cost average and you know you dollar cost average in this entire place back here and if we happen to reach up here then then okay sell it all um otherwise just hold it until the next bull run and and then cash out at the top of the next bull run or or once you're in major major profits however for the trading account the trading account is all about if thens so if we come up here and then we get a rejection off of some somewhere within this level some somewhere within here we get a swing failure pattern or something like that and we never even close above here or we get a swing feather pattern above here this level then then it's a short then you would want to short the market so that's what the total market cap is looking like it, it did have this nice breakout i like the breakout we'll see how long this could be sustained we are overly in the in the overbought territories for the rsi and the stochastic rsi uh, let me also mm, i was going to get the macd i'll get the macd up hold on one second Okay, so I got the MACD up and the MACD is it's it's very very high, but it does not it doesn't it hasn't it hasn't actually turned over yet. When you when it turns over, you see one of these darker blue areas uh, bars and so we haven't seen that yet. So that's what to look for when you're looking at the MACD maybe on the 12 hour we had this, but it's still looking fairly strong. 
even on the 12 hour, um, I think on the weekly, there might have been a bullish divergence. Okay, so we're getting the M on the weekly. Typically with the MACD, what you see is you see something like this, you see an M, and then you see a W. And so that is the that is indicative of of how the markets work, of how the uh, MACD works. I'm also looking back here. I do see this is a very, very nice weekly weekly bullish divergence back here, which happened on, which happened right here. So at this point, this was, this was right before the big run up. There was a big drop down before that, but the bullish divergence on the MACD is very, very, very powerful. And so if I see that, I do, I do like to go along, especially if we have the confluence of the oversold RSI and stochastic RSI. Um, so on the weekly, we don't really have the oversold on the RSI or anything, and we are actually above the 50, which I do like on the on the RSI. But the weekly, I think, is just too high of a time frame to use because things change so 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 quickly in crypto, and so you, I think, the daily is much better. And so anyway, that's that's the total market cap. Let's look at Bitcoin and just try to decipher some things, see what see what's going on with Bitcoin. We'll look at the, uh, first I'll look at the monthly chart, see what's going on. So on the monthly chart, this is the deal. This is the 78.6%, which is a great, it's a really good level to go in when it comes to the Fibonacci. And also on Bitcoin, this was the 19,891, that was the 2017 high. And really I was waiting until we're above here um, to, to have a long bias because you could see this was the floor this was the floor this was the floor we broke down below it in september which is really really bad and now we're back above it so if we come back down to this level around 20k i think that that would be a decent long opportunity because this is obviously the range uh yeah this is the range over here and this was this was such a significant level and 20k is such a significant number that i think any drop down to 20k is a long opportunity um so on the monthly chart i have a couple other things that are out on here and if i just go like this um let me let me do this real quick okay there you go so on the monthly chart i plan on selling almost everything in december and simply just having like um a, a, a closed zero cost basis type of deal thing for 2023 and just completely starting over in 2023 and being very, very organized. And that is what I plan on doing. So I don't know if other people are thinking that in that same way where they're going to be selling at the end of December and then just waiting until 2023 to buy back in. But I think that there's probably going to be like, you know, a decent amount of people that do do that. So that's just one thing that I wanted to say. And then the other thing is that on the monthly chart, you could see the 28.9K. Um, that's a huge, huge, huge level. That's the yearly open close for 2020 and 2021. And it's the 38.2 FIB. So I don't think we're going to get up to 28K. I don't, I mean, 28, 29K. I, I don't really see that. Um, but I'm about, I don't know, 50-50 on it. I'm about 50-50 on it. However... I think the, there's still there's still too much risk on the table g given the global macroeconomic situation that I wouldn't want to be all in uh, necessarily like with a, with my investing account like say no stop loss type of deal just like go in hope for the best type type of type of trade I, I wouldn't want to do that right now I would I would play level to level and I, in my trading account I have my stop losses I have everything and in my investment account I keep on dollar cost averaging and of course if we reach 28k I'm freaking out of here and I'm selling because I think that we will get a huge rejection off of there but before we even reach there we got to reach 25 and before we even reach 25 we got to get to the weekly levels and the weekly levels Let's go to the weekly chart. Weekly weekly chart 24.3 and even even right here 22.8. So basically 23k. This level right here is a what is this? A um, sell side liquidity uh, supply zone right here. Lots of supply. So I would expect a move down from here. And let's go down into the actual charts. So it's the weekly chart. This is what I did. This is what I what I plotted out. So last 
I think it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a week ago or two weeks ago that I said, okay, close below here, target the low, close below here, target June lows. We never closed down there. So I could, you know, get rid of all of that stuff. And we did bump up above here. And this is pretty much the game plan, which is that if I take the weekly, weekly fib, it's like we're obviously above the range of last week. We're above the weekly range, right? So that doesn't do much, much, us much help. So what we have to do is instead of looking at the weekly range, we look at the market structure range. So there's two different ways that you could look at the ranges. You can look at it on a time-based range, which is the weekly, which is what I love. I love to do is I start off on the weekly. If there's no clear range on the weekly, then I, or we do something like this, then I'll do the market structure. And this is the clear market structure. Lows, lows, highs, 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 obviously. So we did break above the high on the weekly, on, on the range of the macro structure. Then we retested it and now we are potentially, yeah, we're going to make a new high. If we close up here, we're going to make a higher high on the daily chart. So that's actually very bullish. So let's go down to the 12 hour and see what we can look for. So I'm potentially looking for longs to target 21.5. 21.5 is the major level. Why is this the major level? Is the major level because on, excuse me, let me go back to the daily chart. This is the last up move before the down move that broke the market structure. And this is the bearish order block. Plus you could see major wicks into this level. So there's a lot of supply over here, or there's a lot of resistance right here. This is a very clear resistance right here at 21.5. So once we reach 21.5, I would start going risk off, even if I'm risk on right now, because what you could see is that we had a, um, we had a swing feather pattern right here. So we had a move down, followed by the move up and a reclaim. And this was the low. Oh, actually, wait a minute. This was this was the low. This was the swing low. And then we broke below it and closed back above it. So that's a swing failure pattern, which is really, really good. And then we broke above the range high and we retested it and now we're going up. So I want to look for a market structure break like this, which we're about to get, we're about, or yeah, we're about to get the market structure break up here. That's nice. So then I look for a re potential retrace to long to continue, to continue the higher highs, higher lows. Okay. So something, you know, eventually something like that, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, until we get to an area of resistance of which I will take my risk off and then I will uh, potentially look to uh, to sell or I will sell any longs that I have and I will potentially look for sorts. Although I don't think I'll be, I, you know, shorting is, is pretty dangerous. Um, but but if you define your risk, then you could short and you will be fine as long as your risk is defined and you know how much you're going to lose before you even put the trade on. So there is that is that and let's see if i could go down and, and find a find a good entry for for bitcoin so yeah i mean this is the level these are the levels i mean this is such an this obvious obvious resistance 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 turned into turned into support and this is actually a great example right here resistance 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 broke above it a lot of people a lot of people longed right here but what happens a lot of times a lot of times market makers will drive the price back down, back down into the bullish order block right here. Okay. Let me, let me do the template bullish order. Block. They'll drive the price down in back into the bullish order block, which is the down move of the up candle that broke the market structure. And they will drive it down, which is below the resistance slash support, the SR flip. And they'll do this because a lot of new people, a lot of new traders, they put their buys right here. Of course, you would put your buy like, resistance, resistance, resistance. Okay, busted above it, SR flip, buy right here, good to go. And then they put their stops somewhere down here or they get just um, stopped out due to uh, 
uh, fear, and then the price rallies back up. So this is a perfect example. This happens all the time, and I used to get I used to get chopped up by this because I personally I would buy on the SR flip thinking that it, it should you know move up from the SR flip, but it does this a lot. So be wary. Be wary if you are a support resistance flip buyer slash seller, if you use SR flips to, to trade, because this happens a ton of times. Usually what I like to do is I'll look for the order block and I will look for uh, the 61.8 or the Fibonacci level, the 50%. So this was the 61.8 and you put your, you put your buy somewhere right, right around there probably wouldn't have gotten right there. But if you use the 50%, which is a, I have learned a great level to actually buy in. I hate it because it's not a true Fibonacci level, but it is a level that a lot of traders use. You use the 50% and you get in. So, excuse me. So we have that. We came back down, bullish order block. Now we're closing above a uh, market structure break right here again. So where do I want to get in? Well, let's go down to a lower time frame and see what we could see. Um, Let's check this out. We did get, okay, so we got the move above. Oh, this actually, uh, the one hour doesn't look that good because we got the swing feather pattern right here. We did get an SFP right there um, and it did move down, but, oh wait, and then we got a lower high. So mm, this is actually a little tough. This is actually a little tough. So this is what I'm looking at right here. We got the Obviously, the SR flip that happened, the move down back into the bullish bullish order block, followed by a slash 50% uh, fib. Then we got the move up. Uh, uh, basically, a consolidation. I wouldn't call this a retest. I would call this a consolidation at the resistance slash support flip, followed by another move up. Then we got a swing feather pattern of the previous high and a move back down. But what you could see is that we are making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Ha this right here, the fact that this is not a higher high, this is a little bit concerning. This is a little bit concerning, not gonna lie, because you wanna see higher highs. You wanna continually see higher highs and, and higher lows. However, given the market sentiment right now, I would, I'm still leaning more bullish. I am still leaning more bullish. And really the only way for this to solidify as some type of top is if we break the market structure to the downside. So we got the low, we got the high, we got the low, we got the high. You could argue that this is the low. And if we break down below here, then that's a bearish market structure break. Or you could be on the safe side and use this as the low and say, if we break down below here, we have a bullish market structure break. Uh, excuse me, a bear, bearish market structure break. And, and that would not be good. But I think that I think that being more bullish than bearish is probably a, a good idea. And let's just look at this. Right here, we have this move. Ah, this is a swing feather brown. Hmm, let's see. Move up, move down. We got the retest of the of the order block, followed by another move up. <sighs> given this, given this particular situation. To me, this looks the most like some type of move like this, um, which means that it should come back down here followed by a big move up. But this is a tricky one. Maybe Ethereum has, has, a better, has a better play. And by the way, I would much rather play Ethereum than Bitcoin because you, there's just, it's just higher beta. So you make more gains with Ethereum and, and other coins as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Ethereum. And so I'm looking at Ethereum now. This is, we can start off on the monthly chart. You can see we are, we have fallen 80, 82% down and then um, a nice, nice pop up. And we made our first first higher low on the monthly chart. So because this is the first, um, you know, we got the high, then we got the low, we got the high, lower high, we got the lower low, we got the lower high, and now we finally got a higher low. This is the first indication that things are turning around. So uh, what we want to see is a continuation and a higher high to form because you get you get a higher high and that's a, a trend 
a break in the trend. So uh, this would this right here is the is the high of the previous high. So if we close above 16, th let me just do this. If we close above 1677, if we close somewhere up here for October, then that would indicate a change in the trend on the monthly chart. Also, let's check the uh, other things. The MACD looks pretty pretty good. Uh, there's still some room for it to come up. And the RSI is uh, pretty solid on the monthly as well. So the RSI and the MACD are looking pretty good on the monthly. On the weekly, ooh, that doesn't look too good for the RSI, to be honest. Um, and the, I, excuse me, for the MACD. And the RSI is, stochastic is going down. Um, but the, I don't know, the regular RSI is over the 50 level, but it has been over the 50 level before, and it has uh, come down. So it really needs to sustain. You can't really use it on the weekly time frame because it's just too, it's too big of a time frame. Uh, so what am I looking at? The orange lines right here, I denoted this is the 2017 top. This is the next, then this is the 78.6. So the 2017 top. So we are back above the 2017 top, which is uh, 1,420. So that is good. So what I would love to see, what I would love to see is something like this is a return back to here followed by you know a, con a continuation up that would be pretty cool but on the weekly chart you could see and actually i need to go back down here uh on the weekly chart you could see we got a high then we got a lower high and potentially another lower high so that is definitely something to keep in mind you know high lower high lower so we obviously on the weekly chart for ethereum the, the i mean the previous high is all the way up at 3500 like that that was the freaking high so you're not going to get a move all the way up there like to break that like because that's technically like bullish what what's the most bullish thing is what happened right here where we made a high and we made a lower low and then we made a higher uh, excuse me, we broke the, we broke this market structure right here to the upside, right? And then what happened? And actually, wow, look at this on the weekly chart. On the weekly chart, this is the this is the bullish order, order block right here. Uh, here we go. And and it actually came back down on the weekly time frame and, and tagged it. And yeah, this was I was freaking in this. I was in it right when it did this. But um, yeah, eh, close it out. When, the, when I got hacked, so that's annoying as hell. But uh, regardless, we did get the touch of the of the bullish order block um, and then the, the move back up. So now we have the move up and what do we look for? We look for uh, continuation. So lower high, lower high. This is looks like it's gonna be another, another lower high. This is a big SR flip level right here at uh, 1700. So 1700 is really the top. I think 1700 is, is the top that I see. And honestly, even if we do get above 1700, let's say we get up here, I would, I would this is a huge supply zone and there's gonna be a lot of buy stop liquidity up here. I bet you if we get above 1787 let's say we get to like 1800 right we get to 1800 oh man i have a big feeling that we would just absolutely crash from uh from this from this zone up here let me bring that right there from from this zone right up here because because it'll be like oh everyone's a higher high you know it's, it's doing good like bull run is back on but this is where i think we'll see it fall this is where i think the top will be in because i like i said i don't think i don't think the rally is sustainable in these market conditions um and i don't think i don't think the economic the i don't think the economy is is even close to being where it is uh being being close to the bottom and so i want to get in to the market i want to be all in the market about six months before i think that the economy will bottom uh, because the markets they turn around first and then the economy turns around. So the markets turn around, the markets bottom, but the economy itself, jobs, housing, like employment, uh, people being able to afford things, all of that still declines. All of that still goes down. The economy still goes into the shitter, but the markets reverse about six months to, to maybe even a year uh, before the bottom before the bottom so you want to be in the markets well in advance you don't want to wait until the market until the economy is in is is at is is at the just worst possible case you want to wait until the um you want to you want to try to front run it basically but i don't think that the i don't think that we're even close to being in the worst case scenario for the economy yet which is why i don't think we've bottomed yet but 
you can try to play these plays that we're having right now because now is the time to pay attention because potentially, potentially, we have a move up. We continue move up, and you know we could potentially move up another thirty four percent for Ethereum. That's a lot. It's a lot. So you want to try to get these things, um, and that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you guys. So we were in this range. Let's look at Ethereum. We were in this range. We broke out above this range. This huge accumulation period down here. Broke out above it. Wow, actually, look at this. Came up here on the news, excuse me, the rumors of the Ethereum merge. Then the merge happened and we went back down, retested the top of the range. Perfect retest, basically. Near perfect retest at the top of the range. This right here, this was the CPI data, fell down, closed back above it. This was an amazing long opportunity right here at 1,286. Um, that was really, that was really it right here this was the, this was the best way to long because this was so clear so clear back into the range followed by a move back above it so that's a deviation and this is also a deviation down into the range back above it so you long right here target the top of the range um this should be a little bit lower but still it wasn't actually tapped so it, that was front ran and then uh, this move yeah this was the move right here on october 13th so that was the local bottom on local bottom was October 13th, uh, about two weeks ago. And now we obviously broke above this particular range. And this is no longer the weekly high. This is no longer the weekly low. So I'll get rid of that. And if we look at the weekly charts, um, no point, no point in. Yeah, never mind. I was going to say uh, we could map it out, but there's no point in mapping it out. This is this was the range. So now. Uh, and basically, it's it was close above here. Basically, close above here. Um, target 15 to 16k. So we closed above here. Now we're at 1620. Ooh, so we're at 1620. So we might see a little bit. So this is this is definitely the this is definitely the spot of potential downside. And we do have bearish divergences. So it's like, are we gonna play the hype? Are we gonna continue to stay in? based off of the hype that's happening right now or are we going to or are we going to trade and try to get these smaller moves and try to try to get in at at better places right now this is the consolidation right here so this is the area for ethereum that i would like that i would really like to long i would really like to long somewhere around here target 1750 for a oh let me let me use the long tool let me do this um bring this like this uh, and bring this up here 1.75 uh 1.74 r that would be the move that i would do for ethereum and i would probably stack it in i'd probably stack my orders in and and bring honestly my orders even all the way down there because if we lose this right here and i'll do the same thing that i did on bitcoin i'll show you that we had the low right high higher low higher 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 high higher low now we want to see a higher low followed by another higher high that's what we're looking for and if we get that, I could see it coming down into this range. So I would want uh, this would be my this would be my trade. You could also see that this was a nice consolidation period right here. This was a nice consolidation period right here. So I'm, yeah, I think a lot of people will long right here the SR flip. It'll fall down just below that. So this is what I would do. This is this is where I would long it. I would long something like this. Yeah, that's what I would do. So this would be my long position for Ethereum based off the chart. Because I don't want to long it right now because the MACD has a bearish divergence on the four hour. The RSI has bearish divergences and uh, the stochastic RSI is overbought. So I would want to get in. I would want to get in uh, right here for sure. Okay. And so that's Ethereum uh, against uh, USD. Now let's look at Ethereum against Bitcoin. Uh, I really don't like this move. I really don't like this candle on ethereum it's, it reminds me of this one right here and then we we ended up falling back down uh, from there although we did obviously jump back up but this this is actually even worse this is a really bad looking shooting star 
uh, and, and at, uh, is this an SFP? Yeah, shooting star SFP. So I would probably, I don't think I would be in any trades right this very second because of this, because of Ethereum against Bitcoin. Uh, so that's that's one thing to know. Plus we have, plus we have bearish divergences all across the board. Yeah, so let's look back at this. I mean, obviously this week was huge. And we're sort of at like a pretty decent resistance. This is also a big resistance. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're at a resistance. We didn't quite get to the very top, but this is a, this is a big resistance area on the weekly. And I don't know. I just wouldn't feel totally comfortable being in Ethereum against Bitcoin, being in pretty much anything because this is a pretty good gauge of the markets like the time to be the time to the time to get in was a couple of days ago it just was it just was and yeah bitcoin doms is coming back down it's just so annoying so annoying seeing all of this stuff that i was like really 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 about uh play out but then got got totally effed but yeah, that's, I'm, I'm not liking the way the this is looking right now. Just like this huge, huge run up. This, and yeah, so that's ETH BTC. I'm going to look at LINK and I'm going to look at uh, the NASDAQ. I'm going to look at stocks right now. Let's look at stocks. And then I'm going to look at LINK. And actually, pff, screw it. I'm going to look at LINK right now because um, I'm in LINK. So the thing about link and this is this is a little alpha play is that link is supposed to come out with staking sometime next month this month or next month or the month after i don't know sometime this quarter and so that is a huge 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 catalyst so i will say this for link it it's it's most likely going to hit nine nine dollars maybe like 9.1 it's most likely going to hit the top of this range whenever staking becomes available there's going to be so many people buying it so many people buying it to stake it that honestly i i not now that i honestly think about it i wouldn't rule out i wouldn't rule out 16 dollar link when staking becomes available whenever staking becomes available that's oh man i mean that's 125 percent gain from current levels but this chart is looking really nice. This chart looks really, really good. And like that, that, that is such a big fundamental catalyst that I would say that even though I, I'm, I don't want to be in too many trades right now, I think link is one that I'm feel, I feel comfortable being in. I do feel comfortable being in link because even if it drops down here, I'm just, I link, I'm going to be dollar cost averaging into, I'm just going to continue to average into if link happens to fall, happens to fall down, I'm going to buy it based solely on the fundamental play. So let me write that in here. And I will uh, just put this in the video. If you go to chain.link slash economic slash staking, and you click on learn more about staking, you do see that uh, chain link is offering early access to staking right now. And if you look right here as a key step towards realizing Chainlink Economics 2.0, we're excited to announce that the initial beta version of Chainlink staking is planned to launch on Ethereum mainnet in December of 2022. So, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely heavy into Chainlink. I like I'm I don't even I don't want to say I'm like 80 percent in Chainlink, but like I probably will be. 80% in chain link if we if we fall if we come down and because because it's just such an obvious play hopefully like I don't know hopefully it's not so obvious that everyone does it and then it just like falls but yeah that's what I'm doing and if it falls down here that's uh that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna buy more so this is my play for chain link um I was in it actually much earlier than this I was in it all the way over over I don't know back here I think uh but this is chain link against Bitcoin. But then when it when it fell and it broke the market structure right here to the downside against Bitcoin, I got out of chain link and I went back into Bitcoin. I, I just I sold my uh, I sold my Bitcoin for chain link. Excuse me, my chain link for Bitcoin. And um, that was really good because it fell all the way down here. But now this actually look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this market structure break to the upside on the daily chart against Bitcoin. So Chainlink is definitely a much better play 
Um, so if, like, I think going into converting Bitcoin to Chainlink is the move because this is this is the first market structure break to the upside that we've had since uh, we broke the market structure to the downside on uh, chain link against Bitcoin. And of course it came at the 61.8. So, which is a perfect, you know, golden Fibonacci number, uh, which is awesome. And so, yeah, I think that maybe we'll get a little bit of a retrace, you know, a link against Bitcoin, but then I think that we're going to make new all time highs. I think that this is really good. Let's look at the weekly chart. And um, yeah, I mean, look at the weekly chart of, look at the weekly chart of, of, of link against Bitcoin. Like, this was the support, 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 manipulation, drop down below, and now we're back above it. So as long as long as we're above it, that's what I want to say. As long as we're above it, that's what I want to say. I don't like this at all, and this I don't really like. I, I don't like the um, RSI, the stochastic RSI, or the MACD, the indicators. I don't like the indicators, but from a pure, I don't know, just a just a pure technical uh, level playing field. Like this is it. Like this is good. This is really good. And also, if, you know, I could get rid of all of these, all of these things. This was just showing that there was higher highs and higher lows and all this other shit, right? Um, like, this is a good one, two, three. This is a, yeah, I don't know. This, to me, to me, it, it, there's something with trading. If you look at the charts, you look so many charts, right? You look at charts and charts and charts for years and years and years. Sometimes you look at something and you're like, you just get a good feeling about it. You seriously, you just get a good feeling about it. And on the weekly chart, I mean, even on the weekly chart, we had the, we had the, you know, c constant lower highs and lower lows. Finally, we got the market structure break up. We got the move down, uh, a, low, a higher low compared to here, higher high, higher low, higher high. This was, this was the uh, market structure break to the downside, but you could also argue that this was, this is a continuation of making higher highs and higher lows. You know, you could argue that. So yeah, I do like I do like Chainlink, and I think with the fact that that there's staking coming out, it's it's a no brainer. Okay, so yeah, I I think that's pretty much all for uh for Link that I had right there. Um, so I do really really like Link, and also I'll just look at Doge. I'll take a look at it. So I do think that if you take the Fibonacci, right? I do think that there, there is an opportunity right here, this level right here at 95 at 0 0.095. I think you could get in right here. And I think you could do this. I think this is a good play. It's a nice 4.6, 4.2 RR. And I think that this play is, is pretty solid when it comes to Doge. Obviously, it has a it had a, this huge, huge few days up. I'm gonna have a retracement, and this is where I would want to get. This is this is the trade that I would want to do for Doge. So I would bring it down to the one hour chart, and I would if I could do this. There you go. Yeah, and I would take the Fibonacci and and just do it like that, exactly how I did it. So let me bring this like this. Bottom. Actually, I don't know if I would do it from from here or from here i do it from here just to just to do it you sort of just got to pick a level and yeah this would be the level this is exactly what i would do this is yeah right here this is actually what i would do so i would start off trying to do this and then um if that doesn't work then i would get in down here at 0.089 so I'd get in right over 0 0.99 and uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's, that's Doge. And then Shiba Inu is another one that I was looking at. So yeah, I think, I think getting in on Shiba right around here is a good idea as well. And you could do the same thing, you know, target, target up there, stop goes right there. And this is a pretty solid trade for, for Shiba. And you know, that's going to be it. That's going to be it for this market update. It's been a while, so uh, hopefully this was useful, gave you some insight into what I'm doing, gave you some insight into my overall strategy and uh, some coins that I'm going into. And honestly, if this video, if these things, you know, if I'm helping you at all, if you're getting any, you know, insight at all, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel. It would help me out tremendously. 
especially after the hit that I took this week. Um, so yeah, if you could do that, that would be absolutely awesome. And other than that, I think I'm going to end this here. So I'll talk to you all later. I'll see you all later and keep on, keep on, just keep on striving. You can't give up. You have to continue moving forward. You have to continue to look at the future and create your own future and put in the work and put in the effort and do so much effort that you create so much results that the results simply drive out any type of angst or self-doubt or worry or anything like that. If you put in the result, if you put in the effort and you get the results, that's what matters. So put in the effort, put in the results, be disciplined and you know, obviously keep on working and keep on doing your things and create the life of your dreams. I'll talk to you all later. Peace out. Bye. Bye.